Let's talk about vitamin C. Why do you take vitamin C? Stick around to the end and I'll tell you why I take vitamin C. Also, this should be fun today. We're gonna run a couple of scientific demonstrations to help illustrate why the form of vitamin C that you take, a capsule out of a bottle, may not be the most effective form to consider in order to help with absorption and all of those benefits of vitamin C that we're after as an antioxidant, immune support, the list goes on and on. Vitamin C is one of the most common supplements taken in the world for good reason. It has a lot of potential benefit. Hi, I'm Dr. Ryan Shelton. I'm with Zenith Labs and welcome to our channel where we help you with health and wellness. We will be reviewing why most vitamin C supplements may not be as effective as you expect them to be and how to achieve the levels that are effective. Leave an emoji down there if you take vitamin C and if you're confused about why the vitamin C that you're taking is not leading to the benefits therapeutically that you're after. It all has to do with the size of the molecule. In nature, in food, vitamin C, when we look at it with a special microscope, is compounded or attached to other compounds. It's a beautiful crystalline image when you look at it with a special microscope. And those other compounds attached to vitamin C actually help you absorb the active vitamin C. When you take it as a supplement, unfortunately, you do not have those other compounds in foods to help you absorb it. It all comes down to something called progressive decrease with dose. That is to say, the more vitamin C that you take, the less that you actually absorb into the system. It's called fractional absorption. And the more that you take without absorbing it, the more likely it is to lead to side effects like abdominal cramping, esophagitis, heartburn, headache, osmotic diarrhea, nausea, vomiting, and kidney stones have been reported in those prone to kidney stones. Adverse effects are more likely to occur at doses that occur above the tolerable upper limit intake of two grams a day. Now, how do we make sure that we're getting in large doses of vitamin C to help with antioxidant support, to help the immune system, without causing all of those negative side effects? We're gonna do a couple of scientific demonstrations to help illustrate how to absorb vitamin C effectively. Again, this all has to do with the size of the molecule, diffusion and fractional absorption. So in this first example, let's pretend that these are your intestines and this blue ball here happens to be vitamin C. It just does not fit, right? And there, there are some technologies out there that can reduce the size of vitamin C somewhat, lipophilic forms of vitamin C, and it reduces the size of vitamin C, but still not able to fit. Our goal is to reduce it to this size. You see these little marbles here? If we could only get vitamin C down to this size, of course it fits into the system, it doesn't cause side effects, and we get the benefit that we're after. In another example, we're gonna use this as vitamin C, this purple dye and the glass of water will be your ability to absorb it. Now what happens? Just kind of sets there on the surface. Give me a thumbs up in the comment section if that makes sense to you. Here's vitamin C in the intestines. Why do we take vitamin C? There are lots of reasons. Common allergies, blood pressure, heart health. It increases the level of a powerful antioxidant called glutathione. It's been studied in diabetes, anemia of chronic disease, of course, for the common cold and other viral infections. And high dose vitamin C might modestly reduce cold symptoms. We've found that in studies. However, taking vitamin C prophylactically or preventatively does not seem to prevent the development of a viral cold. Complex regional pain syndrome is also helped with vitamin C. Taking oral vitamin C after surgery seems to reduce the risk of developing complex regional pain syndrome. Hypercholesterolemia or high cholesterol. Oral vitamin C seems to reduce lipid levels in patients with high triglycerides and high cholesterol. It's helpful for lead toxicity. 
dietary vitamin C seems to lower concentrations of lead in the blood. Post-operative pain and wound healing can be helped with vitamin C. Oral or intravenous vitamin C might prevent acute post-operative pain. It is unclear if vitamin C reduces chronic post-operative pain. It can help with wrinkled, aging skin if applied topically. Topical vitamin C might reduce the appearance of existing wrinkles. It's essential. Vitamin C is essential for collagen synthesis. So think of skin, think of joint health, low back pain associated with disc degeneration, cataracts, infertility, schizophrenia. It's used for so many reasons. So let's make sure that we're using these tiny little marbles to actually get it into the system. Now, what if we reduce vitamin C even more? What happens? It gets into the system, right? This entire water vessel is now concentrated. Your blood serum level is now concentrated with vitamin C. That's our goal. Not a tiny film on the top of the water, but to absorb it and to have it infuse through the blood system so that it gets to the tissues that it needs to get to. The daily recommended dietary allowance for vitamin C are 90 milligrams for men per day and 75 milligrams for women per day, age 19 and older. In pregnancy and lactation, the RDA is 120 milligrams for individuals 19 to 50 years of age and 115 milligrams for ages 18 and younger. And people who use tobacco should take an additional 35 milligrams a day, without question. Dosages of vitamin C can be different for IV therapies, which is important, and topical use. Now, just a moment on COVID, COVID guidelines. Some experts suggest taking vitamin C at 200 milligrams a day to prevent COVID-19 and other respiratory tract infections caused by viruses, or one to two grams a day at the onset of symptoms to improve recovery. These dosages are likely safe in most adults, but there is no strong evidence to support the effectiveness of vitamin C for COVID-19. Furthermore, larger doses of eight grams daily seem to lack benefit. Ensure that you're considering vitamin C for COVID-19 along with following a healthy lifestyle, a healthy diet, exercising, sleeping, meditation, and other proven preventative methods such as washing your hands. We know that intake of vitamin C can increase certain hormones, prescription hormones like estrogen, so birth control, thyroid hormones. We know that vitamin C increases the absorption of iron, which is important. If you have iron deficiency anemia, you wanna take iron with vitamin C or eat high iron meals and take vitamin C to help that iron absorption. Where is vitamin C in the natural environment? It's in fruits and vegetables, acai berry, oranges, guava, peppers. We're looking at fruits and vegetables as sources because that's the best source, right? It's compounded with this beautiful crystalline structure that helps you absorb it. Vitamin C is a water soluble vitamin used in a timely manner by the systems. Where is it stored? It's stored in white blood cells which is important for the immune system. It's stored in your eyes. It's stored in your adrenal glands, important for energy production. And it's stored in the brain. In case any of these tissues or organs need a quick burst due to stress or oxidation. Now, a famous scientist years ago, Linus Pauling, calculated that two to nine grams per day is what's needed based on primates. These primates and guinea pigs per body weight eat about four and a half grams of fruits and vegetables containing vitamin C per day. Now, considering fractional absorption, 90% is absorbed, say with 15 or 30 milligrams. However, if you take dosages of say, 1,250 milligrams, less than 50% is absorbed. And you're more likely to experience those side effects that I mentioned above. We are mutants that biochemical pathways have become unnecessary, like producing vitamin C internally. In Eden, we were consuming somewhere around 2.5 grams to five grams per day due to a high reliance on greens and fruits and vegetables. 
Now, when we look at the US population, about seven to eight percent of individuals are truly deficient. And we know that stress increases our need for vitamin C, a common condition called adrenal fatigue. And when we're stressed, it causes a marked decrease in vitamin C, meaning we need to take in more of it because we can't produce it on our own. As stress increases, both physical and mental causes of stress, that causes oxidation. The amount in other animals, the amount of vitamin C produced goes up correspondingly. We don't produce vitamin C, so we rely on our dietary intake or our nifty supplements to increase our dosages. Now, IV use upwards of five grams per day is, has been used for infections, especially viral infections, oral approaches, and upper limits. And there's this famous IV solution called Myers Cocktail that has a lot of benefits. Google it and uh, educate yourself about it. Now, the structure of vitamin C mimics glucose, but that's a problem. The real problem we face today is that dietary supplements simply do not work well. Studies show that less than 55% of all supplements ingested orally never reach the cell that they're intended to reach. They never reach the brain, your adrenal glands, your eyes. As you reduce the particle size of your formulation containing the compound of interest, you increase its surface area, enabling it to increase something called bioavailability. It's a, your ability to absorb that compound, in this case, vitamin C, into the bloodstream. And you increase the effectiveness and the anti-disease properties of that compound, vitamin C. And you reduce adverse side effects. And you reduce the cost by decreasing the amount required to take in. So liposomal is not enough. Going from blue ball to orange ball is not enough. We use something called nanotechnology. Nanotechnology breaks vitamin C up, and it's still vitamin C, into these small versions of vitamin C. Most people do not realize that the formula is what makes a nano product nano and keeps it that way. It takes expensive equipment. The equipment is about 30% of the equation. You need a great lab. You need great scientists to actually make a nano version of vitamin C. People may pay 300,000 to a million dollars to buy one of these machines and they can make nanoparticles. But if the formula is not done right, you don't get vitamin C. The particles will cluster back together again to their natural form. Nanosorb technology has a nano wave blue light scattering nanoparticle analyzer. And we have tested most of our competitors' products in the nano field. Unfortunately, none of our competitor products have tested in the nano range. They simply do not have the formulation skills that our team of scientists and pharmacists have. Our team are literally the pioneers in nanotechnology with over 250 published white papers on the subject. Nanovitamin C is the true leader in nanotechnology and absorption is 90 to 95%, even at high dosage. If you find this video helpful, please subscribe, click that bell. Now, the reason I take vitamin C, to set a good example for my two young boys. When they see daddy taking this really effective nano form of vitamin C, something clicks and they say, oh, that vitamin must be important, so I'll take it too. The great news is nano vitamin C actually tastes really well and they actually ask for it. You wanna learn more about staying healthy? Check out other videos down below. We post each and every week on a variety of topics. We are here to help guide you on the pathway to health and wellness. I believe in the original meaning of the word doctor, docere, which is teacher. I'm here to be your teacher, be your guide on your health and wellness journey. Thank you so much for your time. My name is Dr. Ryan Shelton.